Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Smoking Steve's today. Boy, oh boy, we got a good one for you today. We're gonna to be fixing up a breaded pork tenderloin sandwich. And I did this uh, a few weeks ago and uh, I made a video and put it out there and uh, those pork tenderloins were awesome. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever had one or not, but it's uh, kind of a uh, Midwestern thing, uh, big in Indiana, that's where uh, we grew up. Uh, in Indiana, and uh, I, one of my viewers, Steve York, has sent me a, a recipe for, from a bar there in Indiana, and if you ever had a breaded tenderloin from a bar, guys, they make the best breaded tenderloins on earth. I'm not kidding you. They're really good. So we're going to be using that recipe, and uh, we're going to add a little twist of our own. Uh, hey, I can't help myself, right? But... Uh, we're gonna get this thing all prepped up and uh, show you how it's done. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, here's what we're starting with. A couple of pieces of pork loin. Uh, these were left over from a previous cook that we did uh, and just took these out of the freezer not too long ago. So what we're gonna do is uh, take this knife here and uh, go ahead and butterfly these guys a little bit uh, while they're partially frozen easier to cut this way so we don't want to cut all the way through it just enough to open it up and flatten it out a little bit we want to leave the hinge in there so to speak and let that uh, open up like so then once these get thaw thawed out a little bit better, uh, we'll go ahead and show you what the next step will be. And that'll be uh, flatten them out even further than this. So uh, stick around, it's gonna get interesting. Okay guys, we got the piece of plastic wrap underneath and a piece of plastic wrap on top. And what we're gonna do is take this little guy right here and uh, flatten these out to make our uh, tenderloin for our sandwich. Well, these are pretty much thawed out now. If you want to pick one of these guys up, uh, I got a link uh, underneath the uh, video in the description section. Uh, you can check these out. Got this side for uh, uh, flattening and this side for uh, tenderizing your meats. Pretty handy little tool. I'm gonna get that pretty flat. Most of the time these uh, breaded tenderloins hang out over the bun and uh, that's what you like guys. That breaded tenderloin hanging out, at, out past that bun. You nibble on that piece that's hanging up, hanging outside the bun. It's really good stuff. You don't want to get them paper thin, but you kind of want them thin. So that's going to do it for that. Okay, guys, here's what we're going to be using for our breading. Some uh, cheese garlic croutons and some panko. And what we're going to do uh, is uh, grind these croutons up, and that's going to add a lot of extra flavor to those uh, pork tenderloins. And I already got some here uh, poured in our uh, grinder, and uh, we're just going to mix that up and uh, uh, some crumbs and uh, be adding that with the uh, panko, and that'll be our breading. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, mixed up here. Okay, got them mixed up here. Let's uh, take a good look at, see what it looks like. Okay, looking pretty good to me. And I can smell all that garlic, all that goodness coming from those uh, croutons. It's really gonna add a, a lot of extra flavor to those uh, breaded tenderloins. Okay, we got our crouton uh, crumbs right here. So we're gonna add our panko. And uh, we're just kinda gonna double it up here a little bit. About like so. Okay, then we're gonna give that a good mix and that'll be our final stage of our breading. Smelling good. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get this going. I did the uh, Pat these dry with paper towel. And this flour is a mixture, uh, one part flour and half part cornstarch. Then we're going uh, into the egg wash. Okay. Then we're going over into our breading. Flip that over. Go ahead and get it on the other side. This is looking good, looking good. You can kind of pat it on there a little bit if you want. Maybe it'll stay a little bit better. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with this other guy right here. This is really turning out good. Getting a nice coating on there. Okay, here's what they look like uh, after we put our coatings on there. As you can see, uh, there's some kind of bare places here on both pieces. So uh, we got some left over here. So just grab some, sprinkle it on there best you can. Try to get it all coated. That's looking pretty good. Same way with this guy. Go ahead and add a little bit on where it didn't get on there so good. And uh, once you add it, go ahead and give it another pat. Get patted down good. Maybe it'll hang on a little better for us. Oh yeah. Looking good. This is what we're after at this stage. So we're gonna go get that uh, bullseye fired up and uh, get it up to temp and show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, we made our way out here to the bullseye and over here is our Rectech bull. What a great combo. And there's my uh, nice cart for my uh, bullseye drgcustomcarts.com so uh, let's go ahead and get this thing fired up so it's just a matter of coming over here hitting the uh, power on button and the last cook uh, I don't know whether you agree it or not was 450 we're going to go ahead and lower that temperature to uh, 350 now we can hit uh, temperature display show us the temperature of the grill and right now it's 100 degrees so we'll 
we're going to let this thing get heated up to 350 and uh, we're going to go ahead and throw our uh, cast iron skillet in there and some grease and get that heated up. Okay, we got our cast iron skillet in there along with a little bit of oil. So we're going to get that uh, oil heated up and uh, once that's heated up, we'll get to cooking. Right now, it's showing that uh, grill at 112 degrees, 113. Okay guys, we got one of them in here. The pan's just big, big enough to do one of them at a time. So uh, we're gonna let this one finish up and then we'll be putting the second one in. Okay, you wanna be looking for around the edges. So when the edges start to turn brown, it's probably ready to flip. So uh, when you see that, uh, looks like a brown over here in the lower left. So uh, we'll check it out and see if it's ready to flip. It was brown enough, so uh, here's what it looks like uh, after we flipped it. It's really looking good. So we're going to let that uh, second side finish up, and then we'll be putting that other one on. Okay, guys, uh, this one's done, and we're going to go ahead and get it out and get that second one put in. Okay, there's that second one. We're going to watch for the edges to start to turn brown, and then we'll check it. And, uh, Probably flip it. Okay, we got that second one flipped now. Just a matter of minutes. We're going to be taking these inside and be doing a taste test. Okay, guys. Just brought these guys inside here. They are looking good. They're looking pretty big. They're going to be hanging over the bun. And if they're too big for you, you can cut them in half. Eat the other half the next day or have some leftovers a couple days later. These are really looking good. The best thing about this, the wife likes, is uh, cooking them outside and keeping all that greasy smell outside there. You don't have to deal with it inside. So let's go ahead and get a sandwich made here and uh, do a taste test. Okay, guys. Got the sandwich made. A little bit of pickle, a little bit of mayo. All that extra hanging over the edge of the bun. That's what you're looking for in a breaded tenderloin. So I'm going to do me a little test here and uh, see what it tastes like. Here we go. Look at this rascal. I'm loving it. I'm going to give me a little nibble here on the edge. That's what we all like on these breaded tenderloins. I don't know whether you can hear all that crunch going on, but this is good stuff. And I want to give a big shout out to Steve York for providing this recipe. This is awesome. Guys, give it a try. Be sure and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.